In Israel, a military base in the Binyamina area was struck by a drone airstrike on October 13. As a result of the attack, four soldiers were killed, and seven others were injured, reports the Israel Defense Forces. That night, the Israeli military clarified the details of drone attack, when one of the drones launched by Hezbollah struck a gathering of people, resulting in dozens of injuries. On Sunday, a UAV launched by the Hezbollah terrorist organization hit an army base adjacent to Binyamina, the Israel Defense Forces stated. The Israel Defense Forces reported that during the incident, four Israel Defense Forces soldiers were killed in the incident and an additional seven were severely injured. It is noted that all the injured were evacuated to hospitals for medical assistance. The Israel Defense Forces also stated that an investigation is underway regarding the incident. According to Israel's Megan David Adam Emergency Service, a total of 61 people were wounded in the attack. It was later revealed that Hezbollah militants used kamikaze drones known as Mir Sad, referred to in Iran as Ababal T. One of these drones could not be shot down, it disappeared from radar and subsequently hit a military target. Hezbollah said it had targeted the Golani Brigade, an infantry unit of the Israel Defense Forces that has been deployed in southern Lebanon. The claim of responsibility for the attack came shortly after the militant group released an audio message from its slain leader Hassan Nasrallah calling on its members to defend your people, your family, your nation, your values and your dignity. Hezbollah said it had fired dozens of rockets toward the northern Israeli towns of Nahariya and Acre to engage Israel's air defense systems, while simultaneously launching the drone swarm. These drones broke through the Israel defense radars without detection and reached its target at the training camp of the elite Golani Brigade in Binyamina, Hezbollah said. Russia is suffering enormous losses of personnel in the hottest direction in the Donetsk region. Hospitals overflow with Russian wounded soldiers, according to the Atesh Partisan Movement. An agent from the 30th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade reported catastrophic losses for the aggressor in the Pokrovsk direction. Every day, brigades set new records. In just one day, up to 50 individuals in their brigade are wounded or killed. Hospitals and medical facilities are overwhelmed forcing the urgent discharge of civilians to make room for injured invaders. This information was confirmed by an agent among the medical staff of one of the hospitals in the temporarily occupied Makiivka. According to him, the occupation authorities continue to ignore the needs of civilians to save their soldiers. Ukrainians are being evicted from hospitals to admit Russian soldiers, the report states. Moscow's losses both in equipment and personnel only continue to grow as it advanced in the western Donetsk region, an onslaught against Ukraine's defended positions that contributed to the heavy toll in September. In early October, two key Ukrainian frontline towns, Volodya and Rabdivka, fell to Russia during its advance towards Pokrovsk. Despite the heavy equipment losses, Russian forces have yet to make concrete tactical gains in the region. Russian forces have also lost rockets, anti-aircraft systems and drones in its offensive along the Eastern Front. This is a breakdown of the heavy losses that could jeopardize Russia's ability to expand its battlefield gains. Ukrainian military expert Lieutenant General Ihor Romanenko says that the primary target of the Russian aggressor's army remains Pokrovsk in Donetsk region. 
The occupiers are trying to encircle the city. According to him, the invaders have not stopped after capturing Volodar. They are trying to advance to the second defensive line of the armed forces of Ukraine, located 8 kilometers to the north. On the other side, they are moving north to direct forces towards Kurakov and then Pokrovsk. So, if capturing Pokrovsk from the front has not been successful, they will organize a slow encirclement from the south and north. Essentially, they are aiming for an operational encirclement. In popular terms, this is called a pocket, Romanenko said. The military expert noted that a few weeks ago, defense forces deployed three brigades, which allowed them to stop and slow the occupiers' advance on Pokrovsk. Pokrovsk, a once vibrant city of 80,000 people, is the object of a Russian encircling move that began in July and is creeping within miles of the city as every day passes. The city has served as a key logistics and transportation hub for Ukrainian military operations in eastern Ukraine and is the gateway to conquering the rest of Donetsk Oblast and potentially onto even bigger prizes such as Dnipro, Ukraine's fourth largest city before the war.